Good evening, and welcome to the Christian Truckers Network. This is a ministry that welcomes guest speakers to share their testimonies as well as the Word of God as the Holy Spirit leads. If you'd like to be a participant, you can call in at 641-715-0689. Then I'll ask for an access code, and that is 863-397, and then the pound sign. Again, that number is 641-715-0689. Access code is 6397 and then the pound sign. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm uh, quite pleased and happy to be able to introduce not only a mighty man, God, a man that uh, so many of us know that is in the trucking industry, and he's also uh, a close friend. Uh, our guest speaker tonight is Wyatt Timmons. Uh, most of you. Uh, that have been out here a while in uh, in the trucks, uh, you remember and uh, still receiving highways and byways. And so we're excited to have him here this evening, excited to see what the Lord has laid on his heart. So, Brother uh, White, uh, the floor is yours. Well, I thank you. Um, maybe we can just have a little word of prayer right, right out of Jump Street. Is that all right? Oh, yes, sir. Are we going to keep everybody live? Yes, sir. Yes, it All right. is yours. It's yours. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, Father, um, we're, we we come together right now, and, and um, you know even better than we do that, uh, Lord, we don't always agree doctrinally. We don't always agree um, in every interpretation. We can agree upon is that we don't want to do anything in our own power. So we pray that for the time we're together tonight, that Holy Spirit, you would be present, that you would uh, would monitor, that you would unction, that you would open our ears and our hearts collectively together. Uh, Hide me behind the cross as I uh, can bring forth um, what was on the heart, and um, we pray that at the end of the day, all that is flesh is removed and all that is Holy Spirit remains. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, what is on my heart was first planted by um, the fact that um, I was asked to do my testimony several uh, weeks ago, and uh, as as uh, we were talking uh, at one point, uh, and I I said I would go ahead and do that, and then it was going to happen in another. Uh, week or so, and so tonight, um, we wind up on more earlier and sooner uh, than we expected, but, but that's okay, because the testimony doesn't change, no matter uh, when I give it. The, the, the thing that's strange to me is that, that I have not shared my full testimony in excess of 20 years. Um, <clears throat> that That doesn't mean I haven't shared parts of it, but I've never really started started from the beginning, and um, so it's kind of strange for me. I, I'm not 100%, believe it or not, I'm not 100% comfortable talking about myself all that much. Uh, so what I'd like to do is there, there are three passages of Scripture that are connected with where I believe that uh, we're going to go before this evening's over. They're connected in this testimony of mine. The first one is Jeremiah 1.5. All three of these are classic passages, by the way. Jeremiah 1.5, uh, that's where, you know, the, the Lord is speaking to him and says, uh, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and I set you apart to be a prophet for the nations. And a uh, very short commentary here. There, there are some in Christendom who would have us believe that 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 was a personal one-on-one communication, you know, from the Lord to Jeremiah, and that it shouldn't be construed as a promise or a revelation of, like, God's design for every human. And to those, I say, I'm not going to argue with you. Um, if you want to limit God's ability to know you and set you apart, y'all go ahead. For me, I'm just going to keep walking in it because it's, it's been working out really good for me just to, to trust the plan that he's had for me before the foundation of the world. 
he uh, he knew me before I was formed in the in the womb, and he set me apart. And the next one is is even more of a classic. It's uh, John three sixteen to eighteen, where just encapsulated, it 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 actually tells that whoever believes in the Lord Jesus shall be saved, and whoever chooses not to believe is already condemned. It's kind of a condense. Uh, condensation of uh, 16 through 18. And finally, Ephesians 6, 12, um, another classic. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. And what I think is important here is to to, to understand for all of us and for, for all of us to remember, including myself, uh, that what this passage is not saying is it's not saying that we don't encounter physical resistance in times of spiritual warfare. We we can be wrestling in fleshly areas uh, that, that that we're being attacked in those realms, um, but that's not really where the battle is. The battle's not on the physical side of it. We know that. <clears throat> it's it's about the spiritual attack that's driving the natural or the physical. So if we get a, a bead on the enemy and his tactics in spiritual realms, um, uh, that Welcome. This service is provided by FreeConferenceCall.com. Please enter job cost code followed by the pound or hash sign. There are three participants in the conference. The recording has started. Muted. Through um, the Assemblies of God Church, there's a couple miles down the road from the house. In those days, it was no big deal to go a couple of miles away from home. And so uh, all week long, Cowboy Bob was doing wonderful uh, gospel magic, which would make some people shudder. But um, he was doing wonderful little tricks that made us all say ooh and ah. And, um, and then he would bring some type of a story and an invitation to accept Jesus. I got saved in that children's crusade. And um, this is one of those really important points uh, of the testimony. If you invite 
Jesus into your heart, if you give your life to him and invite him in, he's going to take you at your word, and he's not going to let you go. Welcome. This service is provided by freeconferencecall.com. Please enter job cost code followed by the pound or hash sign. There are three participants in the conference. The recording has started. But that, that's muted. I'm sorry. I just heard, did somebody just come on and... No, no, you're good, you're good. No, 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 no you're <laughs> okay, good. Okay, I heard somebody say something or something come on. Um, so, inside of about 18 months from that point, and no real friends, no spiritual mentor, and just a few weeks of spiritual teaching, I wind up burying myself in drugs, mostly hallucinogenics. So... <sighs> I don't know how to describe it. We're, we're, we're talking about like a, a whirlwind tour of spiritual attack. This is, was just intended destruction to my very soul. And, and at this point, I'm about 99% clueless that this is spiritual warfare or spiritual attacks going on. I don't even know the term spiritual warfare at this point in my life. But I'm, I'm, um, next thing I know, I'm running serious quantities of drugs from the West Coast to the East Coast. And, and uh, because even an acid head understands what a 300% profit means. So even if I couldn't say it at the time, I knew, I knew it. So um, I was really heading down this, this just incredible um, path that was going completely opposite of what God had in mind uh, for me. It's not the plan that he had for my life. Um, I think of another passage, and that is the fact that, that in Romans we read that God makes everything work together for good that to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So um, uh, all I remember at this point is that there's this, this time in my life where I had asked Jesus to come into my heart. Um, I'm still running with an older crowd at this point. I am just... I'm just an acid-fried idiot, basically. But we all get the bright idea to burglarize a drugstore, and we get away with it for a while. Um, I was living in a little town by this time called Mannheim, down in between Mannheim and Lidditz. I'm running with this older crowd, and, and this is, it's, it was almost like a, like a, a real live Dukes of Hazard. Uh, you know, the second shift local cops, we knew when they were up at the diner, we knew how long it took them to get to town, and sometimes they chased us and caught us, sometimes they didn't. And, and um, there was an old policeman on the force who was about to retire, old Elmer Beck. He's long gone now, but um, Elmer Beck, he pulled us over a whole bunch of times searching our cars and guitar cases and all of that. And, 
life is insane at this point. You know, there's, there's cars and money and drugs and all the trappings that come with that. And I am absolutely miserable. When I lay my head down at night, there's, there's this heavy conviction falling upon me and a great fear because, because the two, I can say this now, I didn't, I didn't really grasp the ten, but the two most powerful entities in the world want me dead. Christ wants me dead to my flesh, and the devil just plain wants me dead in my sins. So the two most powerful entities in the world want me dead. I, I had not forgotten that I invited him into my heart. And at the same time, um, it's like the hounds of hell are just pulling me to closer and closer to, to what was probably going to be an overdose at some point. I'm shaking... Um, I'm I'm shaking at the core of my soul at night. I'm pleading with God to help me break out of this mess because I know where it's taken me. And and again, I I couldn't tell you at that moment what spiritual warfare was, but I knew that something far more powerful than myself was pulling at me from two directions. And my my conversations with, with God were at intense warfare. Uh, I knew that grace was sustaining me, even if I couldn't verbalize that. I knew it was this, this something from the Lord himself was sustaining me. But it didn't make any sense. I was a, I was a mess, and I was, in, I was choosing to stay in this mess of sin. And my, my, um, my separation communication was, God, help me before it's too late. Um, even at the very height of my addiction, I can tell you that there were times that I would find myself affirming um, that God was real and that the Bible was true. I, I seriously thought that it had much impact because the rest of my life, the testimony was, was hideous. So I've ingested so many forms of hallucinogenics at this point that I'm basically, as I said before, a walking idiot. My mother... Uh, would see me come upstairs into the kitchen, and I'd stand in the middle of the room just trying to remember what I came upstairs for, and she would start suggesting and giving me different promptings. Were you hungry? Did you need something to eat? I mean, I was that far fried in my mind. And this this whole process, from, from a honor roll student to acid fried, took place inside of two years, the, the total journey. So, a fellow druggie uh, associate, uh, we, there really were no friends, a druggie friend gets radically saved, old Bernie Hollinger. He's also going on to be with the Lord now. But he convinces me to come to church with him. The Holy Ghost comes over me. The preacher preaches, and I'm, I am radically on fire. The next six months go by, and there, there isn't anybody in Lancaster County safe from me. I'm telling everybody about Jesus. I'm picking up hitchhikers, and I'm witnessing about Jesus. I'm, I'm showing the Bible. I'm showing them the Bible while I'm driving down the road, and, and I'm asking those, uh, those seemingly um, corny questions, uh, the witnessing questions, like, if you died today, where would you go? And I have to tell you, um, I was enjoying a, a really good closing rate on those approaches. Uh, pretty good success in car witnessing. Um, I look back on it now, and I'm thinking they wanted to get right with Jesus right then and there, because I was driving with one hand and turning the pages of the Bible with the other hand and probably swerving like I was back on drugs. And they may have, they may have thought that this really could be their last day on earth. So I had a pretty high success rate of leading people to Jesus in, in, in those hitchhiking uh, situations. But, um, and moving forward with the Lord at this point, I am on fire. I'm working in the bus ministry. I'm, I'm out canvassing neighborhoods um, and with other workers from the church, and I'm inviting kids to ride the church bus to come to children's church. I'm holding a real job at a local garage as a grease monkey, and that goes on for about six months. And by that time, I've turned 18 years of age. And one day, I go into work. 
I've been clean, I've been testifying, I've been witnessing, I've been loving Jesus, I've been on fire for him. I go to work, not long after I start my morning shift, here comes two state policemen, plain clothes, put handcuffs on me and they take me away. And I can't, for the life of me, imagine why I'm being arrested. God had begun this restoration process inside of me. One of the police officers turns around and says, you are a hypocrite. I, I can't believe I let my daughter get on the church bus with you. And I'm still clueless. Well, it turns out that I was involved with one of those huge drug raids where they wait until they have gathered up just a massive amount of people and then they do this big collection in one or two days, and the, the newspaper shows 200 and some odd people arrested in the local drug roundup. I was in one of those. It turns out that I sold a pretty sizable quantity um, to a, um undercover agent, and uh, <laughs> I I had to deal with it. You know, sometimes God will clean us up and get us saved and sanctified and back on track if we've been off track and backslidden. But that doesn't mean that we don't have to pay the consequences of our decisions and our actions. Sometimes you still have to deal with it. So I'm busted. And I wind up in prison. Now, I get bailed out before the final sentencing. And my pastor has the presence of mind to get me up to Teen Challenge. I don't know if anybody is familiar with that ministry or not, but uh, I go and get involved in Teen Challenge um, and uh, because the odds are pretty good that if you're in that program, they will uh, commute your sentence there. And so I'm in the induction center in Harrisburg, and I'm going through my first three months. My trial comes up. Um, I'm only a month into the, the, that three-month cycle, and my uh, my my trial comes up. They go with me from Teen Challenge. The director goes with me, and this is old hat for them. They are they regularly do this. <sighs> old Hensel Brown is sitting on the bench, and he decides that I should go ahead and go to prison and not be allowed to be remanded to the Teen Challenge Christian Rehabilitation Program. Everybody is standing there with their mouths wide open, and the real kiss of death on this was that Hensel Brown, um, he's really old at this point already, he, he had never overturned a sentencing decision on a drug conviction, ever, uh, on appeals and, and everything. He, he just wouldn't do it. Enter back that name of, uh, of Elmer Beck, the old policeman. By this time, he's actually finally retired. He knew my parents. And he knew that there was a genuine change in my life. He knew it wasn't a jailhouse religion. And God took this old coot, this wonderful old coot, Elmer Beck, and he took it upon himself to go in and get an audience with Hensel Brown. Can you imagine these two old war horses going at it? And somehow Elmer prevailed and got Hensel Brown to reverse the decision. Meanwhile, I don't know this is going on. I'm in, I'm in prison, and on the third day, I put a request in for my guitar, and they let me have it. My mother brings my guitar to me, and they let me have it, which is insane because they took my belt away so I wouldn't hang myself, but they gave me a guitar with six lethal weapons on it. It was just insane, but I have my guitar, and I start playing in the cell block. I start witnessing the cell block, and people start getting saved. And this is just, uh, there's no way to describe what was going on. I didn't even know that I should be afraid of, of being in prison. This goes on 
And on the 12th day, there is a warlock in the first cell block who has finally had his fill of it. And in the lunch, or in the breakfast line, I'm sorry, in the breakfast line, he says, I don't want to hear you say another word about Jesus. I don't want to hear you singing another Jesus song. I don't want to hear another thing. God doesn't have you in here, and God's not getting you out of here. Now I was scared. <laughs> I was a young man, and, and he was a scary dude. And um, my faith was young at that time. But I didn't stop talking about Jesus. And at lunchtime, we're walking back in. He's ahead of us. He goes back into, the, into his cell. And I'm walking back into the cell block, and they called my name out. And I, I never really heard what else they said, but whatever they said, the guy that was walking with me said, get your stuff. You're leaving. I, I had no idea what was going on. Well, I gathered my st- stuff up, and I, and I reported to the guard, and the next thing you know, I'm being released out of prison, and I'm, and I'm remanded back to, to Team Challenge, where God continued to do an incredible work in my mind. Um, he gave me such a hunger for his word, I could not get enough of it. And that's not hyperbole. I could not get enough of it. I was consuming every commentary I could get my hands on. I was consuming the Bible uh, over and over again. I was I was just devouring everything that I could get my hands on. And uh, God literally healed my brain by his word. He restored and made things connect in my brain again so that I... I, I Things made sense, and I could I could be coherent, and I, I just there's no way to describe the healing process that took place inside of my mind, from a guy who couldn't remember what he came upstairs for to a guy who couldn't who couldn't help but to quote the word of God because it was swimming in me from head to toe and everywhere in between. And what I want to hope to impart with this testimony is as that first of all, if there happens to be anybody listening that does not know Jesus, I want you to know um, you make that commitment to him. You take a moment to have a talk with God and you ask him to forgive you of your sins, to ask Jesus to come into your heart. He will never let you go. He will never give up on you. And he will make all things work together to keep you. So if you're worried, if you're concerned that maybe you're, you're, you're not ready to make this commitment because you don't know if you'll keep it, you make the commitment to invite God to come into you through Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit will do the work in you because I was powerless to do the work in me. It took this incredible, incredible, overwhelming power of God to to bring me to this point of salvation. I had to make a decision, and I had to invite him in, but that's it. He did all the the sanctifying. He's all the cleaning up. So there's no such thing as being too bad. There's no such thing as I've gone too far, and I just want to invite you right now, if there's anybody listening at all that hasn't or isn't sure that Jesus is living inside of you, I, I just encourage you to take a few moments. Um, there's a, um, there is a phone number that I believe you can call, and, and we're going to ask Steve to give that out, um, that you can actually call and um, leave a, a request for somebody to contact you back if you like. Um, if you'd like prayer right now, we would love to do that. There's, there's men of God listening right now. Uh, so, so don't let a moment like this pass you up. And the second thing is this. For everybody that's warring in the heavenlies, for a loved one, some friend in a heart way back when, he's taking the time. He's to to hear
Welcome. This service is provided by freeconferencecall.com. Please enter job cost code followed by the pound or hash sign. There are three participants in the conference. The recording has started. Muted. Phone number out here before I uh, before we get yes. too far uh, past it. For those who have uh, listened, as uh, Brother Wyatt has uh, shared his testimony with us, and the uh, saving grace of Jesus Christ, and knowing that it's all through Jesus Christ. It's not of our own. We can do nothing of our own, but we can do all things through Jesus Christ. And to know that God is not a respecter of man. He sent his son to die for each and every one of us. And I kind of think sometimes, uh, Brother Wyatt, you know, people think, well, you know, that's for them. That's for this guy or that guy. And God can't love me as much as what uh, he loves this particular person. And I think about that. And, you know, he says that he sent his son into the world to die for each and every one of us. And, uh, you know, I think about what they, you know, I think about what they say, you know, and then using Billy Graham as an example, because most people know that name. If God loved Billy Graham more than what he loved uh, me or you or somebody that might be here listening, you know, he sent his son as a gift to us. You know, it says that salvation is a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. And if he gave such a great gift as his son to each and every one of us, but he loved Billy Graham more than uh, some of us, what what greater gift could he give Billy Graham than Amen. what he has already given us, and that's his son, Jesus Christ? But for those of you that are uh, listening, and if you have made that commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and have uh, confessed uh, with your mouth that he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and, uh, you know, confess with your mouth that, uh, you know, that he... That, that he uh, was raised after the third day, that he died for your sins, and he raised after the third day, and he now sits at the right hand of the Father. If you have committed your life to Jesus Christ, we'd love to hear about it. If you have any questions concerning this, something that you're confused about, or if you would like somebody to pray with you, oh, that, that'll, just, uh, that'll just tickle us beyond what you could ever mm -hmm. imagine. Uh, you can uh, reach us uh, by dialing 440 Two zero one nine eight two six. Now that's a recorded phone line, but as soon as you leave your message and you hang up, uh, we do get notification of that, and we will be right with you. So, Brother Wyatt, you uh, yes. have a new part of uh, uh, your a new branch, let's say, or uh, you know, I'll let you put the definitions to it on what yeah. you want to. Yeah, we're um, we're going to try to take highways and byways live um, and we're going to try to launch that uh, on a 6 to 7 o'clock time slot on Monday night and we're going to try to launch that on the 26th of this month. So um, what we're looking to do is uh, I, I, I don't think everything that we do on the audio magazine is going to translate over um, because uh, sometimes we, you know, we run uh, uh, songs and I don't think that's going to translate well over the, the telephone. Um, uh, and, and sometimes we, we run, um, well, I think we can pull some of the humor off. I think we can run some of those those spots. I just don't think that the that the music part of highways and byways is gonna gonna be a fit. Um, but everything else, the the, um, the the little end time updates that we've done for well, we've been doing them for 14 uh, years now, and actually before that because we were on the radio for a couple of years before we. Uh, went ahead and went to a CD format. But um, we'll do little end time updates, uh, taking current events and matching them up with scripture. Uh, short segments. Or then in the first place, being There are three participants in the conference. The recording has started. That is Eastern Standard Time. 
So, uh, yes, when you yes, call we'll in, that will be Eastern Standard Time. Muted. Getting back to your, uh, what have happened at that thing or that leading that he puts on us, uh, does he have somebody else to step in and take up where we have dropped the ball? Of course he has. But he knew that you would be faithful in your testimony. You would be faithful in sharing Jesus Christ. So he give you a little, I think he'd give you a little taste of that for such a time as that was for the gentleman that, that you had talked to and uh, you had yeah. Welcome. This service is provided by freeconferencecall.com. Please enter job cost code followed by the pound or hash sign. There are three participants in the conference. The recording has started. Are muted people on this planet. And God has a way of taking their lunacy and somehow weaving it all together so that it all ultimately works into his ultimate plan. And I'm talking about things that he really doesn't want to happen, that people are doing, but he still has this way to orchestrate it all. And 
I, I wouldn't try to change anybody else's theology on it, but for me, I find that to be a greater miracle than in even speaking the world into existence, because <laughs> he's, he's making all of this insanity somehow weave together to work into his final ultimate plan. That blows my mind. Mm-hmm. Amen, amen. Amen. God is good. We know that. He does yes. so many miraculous things each and every day. And, you know, all we need to do is just sit back and be quiet and look. And it's just amazing what he shows us, you know. And, and what does this word say? Call upon me. I answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. You know, we should be excited each and every day that we get up just to see some of these great and mighty things that he's about to show us. Because it's never ending. It's never in right. right. the doors that we yeah. don't even know exist. He opens up to us, and the ones that seek to destroy us, he, he closes them, and sometimes we don't even know about those doors that he had to close. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I am, um, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a synergist. I, I believe we play a part in, in, in the Lord's plan, and, and I believe our decisions play a part in that but i think you 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 actually hit the rest of that nail on the head because um you 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 made mention to the fact that um well how did you say that earlier you were talking about uh, the decisions we make and somehow god um he, oh, he Romans know, 8, 28 yeah yeah and and i had mentioned that earlier um I, yeah, I guess I'm kind of looping because I'm just in awe of of the fact that he makes things work out that way. Um, amen, amen. Yeah. Now, did you recognize, by any chance, did you recognize that name Chuck Smith at all? No, I didn't. Yeah. Um, Should I have? Well, uh, it depends what realms you travel in, I think. Uh, uh, he, he, he was used out on the West Coast and... He and another man that I can't tell you his name right now um, were were literally the the igniting point for that whole Jesus one way movement. And okay. never never a more humble man would you meet. Do you do you remember those Jesus freak days? Oh yeah, <laughs> okay. oh yeah. yeah. So uh, and never a more humble man would you meet. Uh, than than him, but he became internationally uh, recognized. Uh, matter of fact, he had before he passed away, the Lord allowed him to do a through the Bible commentary on Sunday nights at his church, and and, and this was one of the very first consistent mega churches. By the way, they started out in a in a huge tent there in Costa Mesa, and. Um, and uh, they ultimately built this ginormous, ginormous uh, cathedral of a church. But they started out in a tent that the tent, uh, the tent held uh, like five or six thousand people under it. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> yeah, they 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 just it was that's what it grew into. And then they finally said maybe we better build a real building. Um, but uh, yeah, the the. Um, the roots that that are there and the influences that were there early on, um, all of these people who were planting and sowing and pouring in, and they, they're not going to know until we all get up there in glory how much effect they actually had. I feel the same way about what you're doing here on the round table. You have no idea. You know, you have people that can call in and they never say a word and, and you don't know what's happening inside of their hearts. and You don't know That's where right. you're planting the seed, whether you're watering a little bit. Um, you know, I, I kind of jokingly say some people plant, some people water, and the Lord's given me the job of spreading the fertilizer. But um, <laughs> but I, I I just I'm I'm honored to even be part of this, and um, I just thank you for um, inviting me in and uh, and allowing me to uh, share in it. Well, I'll tell you what, we're definitely blessed and humbled that you come and speak with us. 
Uh, you just, you know, as a lot, of that, a lot of some of those that have been on the line, a lot of them that have listened before, you know, they they've heard you before. And like I said in the introduction, the beginning of uh, tonight's uh, uh, service, that you know, so many of us that know you by highways and byways, you know, by listening to your CDs, and you know, when they were coming out quarterly, you know, it's like you'd run across them in the truck stop and you'd look and say, oh man. I already got that one. <laughs> you know, where's, where's the next one? Where's the next one? You know, come on, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, of course, when, uh, you know, I was given the privilege to be able to hand your CDs out, uh, I said, there you go. Now I know I'll get each one, and I won't have to try to hunt them down ah. across the country as I go. Oh, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll have them first. Hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> but, uh, well, you know but we're definitely I, blessed to have you here. Yeah, that, that, thank you. The, the whole... Uh, the whole journey has been just wild because uh, we have we have just we've made these steps right along with with the technology as as, as it has advanced, and now uh, we're doing these video casts. They're going out, and and we're we're actually putting um, highways to byway highways and byways together in in uh, these little video uh, clips that are going out, and then when we get a full one together. We'll actually put that into a DVD format, and we'll put that out to the truckers. We'll put we'll we'll have that passed out, so we'll start right. handing out DVDs, and they'll have a full. That's why we're calling it first gear, second gear, and third gear. It's taking the place of what a track would be: track one, track two. Um, okay. And so when when we get a full when we get a DVD full of um, of them, it'll be one complete. Uh, volume, volume one, probably gear, I don't know what gear we'll get up to, gear seven or gear eight before we fill up a CD, and then uh, and then we'll put, uh, or a DVD, we'll put that out, and instead of handing out uh, CDs, we'll, we'll have our highway ministers handing out DVDs, because everybody can throw that in their player now, and uh, highways and byways will be out there in a uh, video format. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, and, and I think back on, uh, you know, trying to remember some of the stuff that I've heard on uh, the highways and byways. There was one, uh, uh, I forget the exact number, but there was one uh, road sign segment that was on there that just, uh, I mean, I've told so many people about that, where it says uh, no fishing from the bridge. Do you recall that one? And uh, yeah. the water was like uh, 50 foot, <laughs> you know, the bridge was 50 foot off yeah. the water. And they got the no fishes name? from the bridge. Oh, my, I forget. But I remember what that. That just hit me so funny. And, you know, I, I yeah, I, I, and he, he came up with some really, they were out of the box. They were they were a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that. they were out of the box. Uh, he came up with another one one time that I, at first it really, it was torquing my brain. And uh, I thought, well, wait a minute. You've asked for people to contribute. And you said, think out of the box. So shut up, Wyatt. This is great. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I talk to myself like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, that's something that I really wish would come back. I, I wish that some more folks would call in with some of those um, with some of those segment ideas, you know, and come in with uh, little short encouragements and, and that type of thing. Um, I think right. that that's one thing that's been lacking with the CDs not going out the way they used to. Um, we're, 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 we need to get circulation back up, and we're going to be doing that digitally. So after a while, we'll get start getting some people contributing again. Amen, amen. Hey, Brother Greg, have you listened to uh, Highways and Byways? Have you had the opportunity to run across some CDs? Yeah, every so often I have, yeah. Oh, okay, because uh, they also have it on uh, on a card where you uh, download the bar scanner on your phone and then you just uh, take a picture of it. Uh, send, me, uh, send me your address. And uh, I'll mail you one of them cards. And it's it, got, it, oh, my. You know what, <laughs> How much does it have on it? <laughs> yes. Oh, it's it's all 14 years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Greg, you'll be listening forever. <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> but uh, you don't even have to send them the card. If you go to highwaysandbyways.org, you can scan that from your phone, you can scan it right there on the website. 
Oh, wow. And it'll, okay. down, it, it'll download the Highways and Byways app, and then you'll have the highway. There's an app for that. <laughs> How about that? There's a Highways that's and Byways cool. smartphone app, and that's what you'll you'll hit that with that. And uh, but uh, but listen, you should send them some of the cards anyway. You may be able to pass right, them out right. to someone else. Yes, I will. I will. Just send me your All address right. tomorrow, Greg. Text it to me, and uh, I'll get those right out to you. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, Brother Wyatt, it's been a pleasure having you here. Amen. I and, appreciate uh, it again. I'm glad you know the way and because you'll be <laughs> back. And, uh, you know, okay. starting, uh, and again, tell that date when uh, you're going to be starting. The uh, 26th. 26th, 6 p.m. We'll go for an hour. And um, that ought to be enough to get us started. And we're also go well, one more thing. Uh, I don't know if I said it, but we're also going to be video casting that on Facebook Live at the same time. So okay. we'll, not only, we'll not only be on the Lord's Roundtable, um, we'll also be doing a video cast. And, uh, and I'll be sending you a little promo that you can run um, like you do for Smokehouse. And it'll explain, okay. it'll explain some of those things. Thanks again. Lord bless uh, to everybody that's on here. And uh, uh, just, I just pray that there was something there that blessed you tonight. I was blessed for being here. Talk to you all later. We're blessed having you. Okay, you be Thanks. blessed, Wyatt. Okay, mm -hmm. bye. bye. Good message. Yes. Uh, this session is no longer being recorded. Yeah, but, man, I kept losing my Internet. Why is yeah. that happening? It kept uh, cutting out, yeah. Yeah, I'm over DA. here in our yard, and I'm thinking maybe it's all these trucks going in and out. I don't know. Are you, uh, I, did you have a good signal? Yeah, I used my phone as a hotspot. I don't know, man. I use it all the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting a hold of Verizon tomorrow and finding out what that's all about. Uh, you know, I have to, if you can, uh, I have to get you to, Go through that with me again, how you do that uh, so that the recording uh, overlaps it, so that it's there. You know how we did that that last time? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just thought I, I should start writing this down in a book of steps until I do it a couple times and get used to it. For just the time is this, as Mordecai told Esther, for this, the time is this. Yeah, uh, you, you may have to invest in a in a in a jet pack. Okay, and what is that? Well, that's a it's a uh, wireless internet uh, card. Okay, and uh, and not try to because you know talking on your phone while while you're uh, trying to do the hotspot may be what's Lagging it right, and I and I know some of the problem too. You know, it's a 4G service, but after I use so much, uh, you know, so much of it before my next billing spot, if I get to a certain point, it drops me down to a uh, 3G. Oh, okay, and I, I well, think that's, and and that's my fault because, man, oh wait a minute, hang on a minute, Greg. Why don't you just get unlimited? 